we have been hit recently with a rash of burglaries. But we're not the only county. I frequently go to these meetings with the sheriffs from other counties, and all of the counties are getting clogged with burglaries. Home burglaries, business burglaries, automobile break-ins. I believe this is a sign of the times for the economy being so bad. Some people think that because the economy is bad and maybe without work, that, that gives them a reason to go steal from somebody else. It's not going to get any better anytime soon, I don't believe. Part of the problem is drug abuse. And if we can eliminate a lot of the drug abuse through, the, through eliminating or reducing the availability of drugs, we're hoping that that will also impact the number of, of burglaries that we have to do. This time I'm going to let uh, Captain Fultz, who's in charge of investigations, he's also in charge of our internal affairs program. He will give you some. Uh, highlights of those investigations such as the this past year. At this point, I uh, think it's time, we've got about 35 minutes left for questions. Uh, who has, has someone to this question? And you can go ahead and have the lights on. Uh, if you have questions that you have written down that we have not already answered, just, I guess, send them to the, to the inside aisles and uh, we'll try to begin answering those questions. We have chosen this format uh, to keep us on time so we can answer as many questions as possible. And uh, we know this is a school night and a work night, so we want to make sure everybody is out of here by 8 o'clock. Uh, some of us will be around here afterwards if you would like to ask us a question personally. Um, you know, a lot of people want to ask a question, but they're a little nervous about getting up in front of people. So we think the written questions is, is a good way to keep everything in control. I know there's more than two. Yeah. Any others? Any others not been collected? <coughs> now I'm going to even try to answer the difficult questions. citizens should give up their right to liberty in order to garner security. Well, first of all, I'm not an advocate of safety checkpoints, which is why I want my guys patrolling. I want them out to limit the guys crossing the center line and so forth. But in order for us to continue to get this, this federal funding for the DOI grant, we have to participate. And we do it as minimally as we can, which is one time a month, two officers. I don't think that's that's overdoing it. I think safety checkpoints are good to a point, but I prefer to have my guys patrolling the areas. Do I think there are times when citizens should give up their right to liberty in order to garner security? Well, I don't believe it. The checkpoints have been ruled constitutional, so I don't believe anybody's giving up their liberty. Uh, the narcotics checkpoints have been deemed unconstitutional, so we don't do them. Something has been deemed to be inappropriate, we don't do it. But as long as it, the courts say it's legal, we will, and we'll try to follow the law as much as we can. If we do something that is not legal, the case gets thrown out. So that's why we try to go by what the courts have said. Uh, I see a lot of deputy activity on I-20. What, uh, what, what does the revenue go to? The, uh, our budget, does, the budget for the Sheriff's Department does not give us sufficient funds to have traffic in. So I try to think outside the box. How can we have a traffic unit? How can we cut down the DUI fatalities, the high-speed fatalities? Let's let the revenue from the traffic tickets pay for the officers, pay for the fuel, pay for the cost. Now, I don't like the idea of, of a law enforcement agency being out there just to generate revenue. You see that in some small towns where they will stop you for going 27 and 25. They'll stop you for not, they write you a ticket and not using your turn signal. They write what I call kind of petty traffic enforcement. However, traffic fines are a byproduct of traffic enforcement. I challenge anybody to come forth 
and show us a traffic ticket where they will find for a minor traffic infraction. A ticket given by one of my deputies. It does not happen. We're very, very lean. We don't write tickets for failure to come to a complete stop at the stop sign. We don't write traffic tickets for um, failure to use your turn signal. Now, I'm, I will tell you this. If uh, Danny Templer is driving down, down the I, I, uh, driving down US-1 in his Z-71 truck, swerving all over the road, somebody calls 911 and says there's a, a tan Z-71 truck with a white male driving in, in a suit who's driving all over the road, and we are able to get a unit there. We can't just stop it. Our officers have to observe an infraction. If he changes lanes without using his turn signal, that's all they need. They'll stop him. If he's fine, maybe he was talking on his telephone, maybe he was leaning over to pick up something on the floor and he went across the knees. Maybe somebody was just mad at Danny Templer and wanted us to harass him. We'll stop him. Mr. Templer, you okay? Obviously, he's not drinking. He's not doing anything illegal. We're required by law to give him a warning ticket. They got to get a piece of paper, and that is for our ethnicity report. Everybody we stop, we document sex, race, and age. So they can document how many white males, black males, white females, black females, Hispanics, whatever, different age groups. They track them. There's no points, there's no fine on a warning ticket, but we are required by law to make a traffic stop, give you a ticket. If we were in it just to make money, we wouldn't have written 2,000 warning tickets in the last year. I myself have written 75 or so warning tickets and one money ticket for a lady who talked herself into it. <laughs> so um, we're very lean on this traffic situation, but we've got to slow people down. I don't think you have to mention this, but the fastest we've clocked somebody on I-20 is 131 miles an hour. Routinely, we clock them in excess of 100. Every day, we get them in excess of 90. But if they're going that fast, they get hammered. If they're running over 100, they get hammered. But we are very mean. Frequently, we reduce the tickets down. We just want to slow people down. People say, well, they get a ticket, they say, how come you're not just stopping the rapists and the drug dealers and murderers, right? We got people doing that. But these guys have got to do the traffic side. Will the traffic team start addressing tailgaters and people pulling out in front of cars since most accidents are not accidents but rather stupidity? Well, stupidity abounds. We see stupid driving all the time. What we do um, is passing on double yellow line. It's, and you all know how it is. You're on I-20 and somebody gets up behind you. You're running 75 miles an hour. We're not going to give you a ticket for that. You're running 75 miles an hour and somebody gets right up on your mother. Infuriates you. Well, we write that person a ticket and they get mad at us for, why aren't you actually doing something about the speeders and this and that? And everybody's got a reason for why they're doing what they're doing. We do write tickets for that. We write tickets for aggressive, dangerous driving. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying keep people from killing themselves and other people on our roads. I'll tell you this too. Very good friend of mine. Very good friend of mine. He met me and said, I got a I got a I need a track. I said, how fast do you go? 96. I said, well I have a policy. We do not we do not dismiss any tickets. Period that for anybody. I am so sorry, but the best we'll do is for anybody to drop down with people up there. <coughs> don't do that for everybody. It kind of depends on your attitude. I, I will tell you all this. Attitude plays a big role in what kind of break you get. So be nice. It makes it better for everybody. We don't drop traffic tickets. And there are a number of reasons I don't do that. One of them is we get in trouble for ticket fixing. And I'm not going to have that on our show tonight. I would patrol down until years ago for ticket fixing. We're not doing that. And I do not want to have the reputation of having a good old boy sheriff's department where my friends get off on tickets. All my really close friends would not even dare to ask me to get off on tickets. I've already let them know. Don't go there. 
just drive like a normal person and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, I would like to see deputies stop in and check on elderly people. These folks would love it and appreciate it. Time and uh, some staff may not be able to do this at this time, but old folks would be thrilled by a short, respectful visit. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. I wish we could do it. I personally have stopped in at Parish Wing and some of the some of the old folks homes uh, myself because I sometimes have a little more time to do that. My deputies, my deputies go call the call the call the call answering calls. We will answer every call. Now the calls I kind of get irritated about or I can't get my 12 year old child out of bed to go to school. So the dad. I believe that's a parental issue. Not a deputy issue. This is a class. Somebody called in. I heard this on the radio and I was wrecked. My neighbor looked at me, me. <laughs> and, and, the, and the deputy said, Tim I was thinking, did you repeat that? The dispatcher said, the lady called up and said her neighbor looked at her in a mean way and she wants you to send a deputy over there. That's a huge waste of our resources. We sent a deputy, and then we're not going to put somebody in jail for looking mean at you. That's the kind of stuff that we deal with on a daily basis. Do you do a lot of traffic checkpoint stops? No, we don't. We do not organize any, zero. I would control organizing, and they need extra manpower, they call us and we don't. What are you doing to stop the shake and bake meth labs? When we find out about it, we stop them, stop them. We have to have citizen involvement. We got a complaint on that one at the motel, kind of drunk, I think it was. The narcotics guys were on it, and they stopped it. The new immigration law, that's a big fiasco. Uh, we're, we're sitting back, kind of waiting uh, to see what the Highway Patrol is going to be in charge of that. For some reason, they got, they got the nod. But I will tell you, some, some lawyers from the Justice Department came down and gave us a song and dance show about the immigration legislation. And they had apparently done their homework on me because I, I said, uh, I kind of got in the face a little bit. I said, you know, I worked for the Department of Justice for 22 years. I know how you all operate. And they said, we know <laughs> that I worked for the Department of Justice. So I guess somebody clued them in that I would be there. And they came down there to appease us, to give us a song and dance from the Justice Department in Washington, which basically was, if they're not going to do anything about it, it's going to be left up to us, and they're not going to make it easy on us. And they're going to challenge any state that tries to do something about it. Because I got a big issue with that. So uh, right now we're just kind of sitting back and waiting to see what what the uh, how we're going to address this immigration issue. Are you still requiring a physical fitness test? Yes, we are. Um, I got a deputy right here who's lost 105 pounds. I have a deputy in the back who's lost 35 pounds. I have another deputy. Uh, right? So he lost it when he was a Canyon police officer. He lost 85 pounds. I'm trying to get these big boys down to a, a better size. It's better for them. They can do the jobs better. Uh, it's not that hard of a test. Uh, it's actually it's embarrassingly easy. But uh, I fired two guys because they didn't pass it. And they had nine months to get ready for it. I don't think they thought I was serious, but they found out. What are the laws concerned regarding concealed weapons permit? I'm an advocate of concealed weapons permits. I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I don't know that it's, it's a personal choice. It's not good for everybody. I encourage people to take the course because if nothing else, it gives you some legal instruction on when you can and cannot use deadly force. I'll just tell you right now, if somebody breaks in your car and steals your laptop and runs away, you can't shoot them back. Or you will be in big trouble. It's basically when they come out, do you great bodily harm? You can defend yourself and you fill the force. That's all covered in concealed weapons forces. Um, I'm a strong advocate. My wife has her, her permit. And uh, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with it. You can't carry it in your car if you go pick up the kids at school. If you've got small kids in your home, you've got to be careful about those weapons in the home. It's not a choice for everybody. But in my family, it's the choice we've made. 
So I don't discourage people from exercising that right. The, the, the sponsor is a veteran's or dis, disabled veteran? Yes. Any veteran does not have to pay $50 fee to slave. You have to have a disability rate to get that. Uh, are there any self-defense classes available, especially for women, tips for children? I know there are some around. I really don't know about them. I, uh, I, I can't answer that question. Uh, Anybody got it for me? Chris? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't answer the question. <coughs> Here's a question from Jeff, Jeff Matt. Uh, the Constitution states that our rights come from our creative and our inalienable. This means they cannot be taken away by anyone from the government. Where do you get the authority? to take away our Fourth Amendment right to be secure in our home and our property and subject the whole community to invasion of privacy to catch a tree. Well, I think that we follow the law. Uh, we're guided by the courts. We follow the law. If we don't, we are in trouble. Our cases get thrown out of court. Uh, to say that we do not follow the law is not accurate. Is there a noise ordinance for loud boombox music in Kershaw County? Uh, no, there's not. Uh, I would suggest if um, you think it's a problem, and it's a problem in some areas, contact your county councilman and ask for a noise ordinance. I've gone to county council for a number of ordinances I think would help the county. Uh, and I, and I, Assuming that they're still considering them, <coughs> they would be beneficial to the county, but there seems to be some opposition on Kershaw County Council to about anything I ask for. But um, uh, we're trying to get some things passed. Is your department still using Chinese overtime? Yes. What's Chinese overtime? That is a, an overtime payment schedule that basically, when my office was required to come work on something, they get basically paid six dollars an hour. So if we have a man, a missing child, well, they have to work an outside duty that I make them work. They have to come in and work for six bucks an hour. And we, that ain't enough. Exactly. They can make more money flipping hamburgers than McDonald's. <coughs> we are the only department in Kershaw County government that gets paid Chinese over because. We have to work so much overtime to break the budget. I was asking a sheriff in some adjoining county, do you guys get paid Chinese overtime? They started laughing at me. They said no. Camden Police Department stopped paying Chinese overtime 24 years ago when they realized that it was unfair. You know, a lot of things were legal in the old days. Slavery was legal, but it's not fair. Change. This is legal, but it's not fair. We got to get that changed. We are having. We're at a crossroads in the crisis in Kershaw County with regard to hiring and retaining quality personnel. The Richmond County just raised an entry level salary for an experienced officer who's been to the academy with four degree to what our lieutenants make here. We can't compete with them. Now they said we can't compete with Richmond County and Lexington County, so we do compete with them because we lose people. There are a lot of Richmond County deputies who live in our county. Chinese overtime doesn't help that. Who wants to come work in the agency we get paid Chinese overtime? Well, just having said that, we have some very, very dedicated people. And we're getting, we're getting a core group of officers at the Sheriff's Department who I wouldn't trade for anybody. I just hope I can keep them. If they have to put groceries on the table, and they all have side jobs. If I make them miss their side job that pays them 20 bucks an hour to come work for six bucks an hour, I'm gonna have a problem. It's not fair. Okay, here's one. Um, 
in January of 2011, when you first took office, of course, Penny was number one in the state of South Carolina regarding DUI incidents and deaths. This is not a statistic that anyone in Curtis County is proud of. Can you tell us what the status is currently regarding DUIs since the administration took office about 13 months ago? I, I have asked the Department of Public Safety to provide us with where we stand at, after the year, after last year, 2011. They don't have all the statistics and yet they cannot give me that. I sure hope we're not number one. I really don't think we are. I would love to be last. That's one of the categories we want to be last in, not first. So we're doing everything we can to make that a reality. January of 2011, I have filed several reports regarding theft. In three of these reports, I was able to provide a name of the suspect and, in one case, some evidence. I have not been called by an investigator once. Whoever wrote this, see Captain Phillips. He will make sure it gets fixed. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. residents do to help them. Residents can do a lot to help us. They can go to the county council and talk about how you support what the sheriff's office is doing, if you support what the sheriff's office is doing. Uh, you can organize a neighborhood watch program. You can make yourselves less of a victim of crime. In other words, if you're parking your car in front of your house and you leave your laptop in it, your GPS in it, your wallet in it, your pocketbook in it, you name it. You are inviting somebody to steal that. They're going to break the window of your car and get in and steal it. If they go to an area where they go car to car to car where there's nothing in there, maybe we go with Leon Lots who believes that in their car and hit his neighbor. <laughs> Take your stuff out of your cars. Somebody said, well, should I lock it or not? That's up to you. They're going to break the window because you got stuff in there. If you leave it unlocked, Maybe you'll save yourself having to repair the window. That's your choice. I lock mine. I lock mine. But there have been times where I'm thinking, man, I should leave the thing unlocked. And then just open the door, go in and see if there's nothing there, and then leave. So busting the window out, and then see if there's nothing in there. That's your all's choice. That's that's what you can do. On your, at your homes, this is a big deal. If you have guns, if you have TVs, you have VCRs, you have anything with the serial number on it, write down the make, the model, and the serial number. A man who had a hundred thousand dollars worth of guns stolen. They took his whole gun stuff. He had the serial numbers for three weapons. So if we see Danny Temple driving down the road with three shotguns in the back of his car and we stop him, say Devil's patrol, he goes, boom, about he just stole these guns. Devin turns around and stops and says, How you doing? How can you go so fast? And we see these guns in the back. We run the serial numbers on those guns, they don't come back if we don't know about it. That's important for us to help us stop criminal activity. So um, that will help us great. What kind of training is available to deputies? I think I went over the training. We're giving all the training we can. The vast majority of it is free. It's, it is not costing the taxpayers of this county anything. Okay, when you made a statement about cockroaches, what did you mean by that? Was it directed as a racial comment? Uh, in the last I checked, it was never Dixonville, it was named Dixon Road after my great grandmother, Jane L. Dixon. Well, no, the comment was not racial. I don't see how it could be considered to be construed to be racial. I will tell this publicly. My daughter's married to a black man. I have grandchildren who are half and half. I'm very, I'm very concerned about the black community. My son-in-law's brother was killed by gang members. His old brother was in and out of the rehab for real hard. He went into the military. He got his 40 degree. He was an army ranger serving in Afghanistan. I love him like my own son. So, no, it was not a racial comment. Uh, now I worked down in Miami. 
when you go in the neighborhood, it was primarily a Caucasian neighborhood. We like to say the same thing. You go in there, you stir up the cockroaches leave, when you leave, they come back. So it was not a racial statement, but a racial statement by any means. Um, this thing about Dixon Bill, I, since, I, since I've lived here, I've heard about Dixon Bill. Uh, there are some people in that area who may have given the Dixon Bill people a bad name. That is no reflection on you all, that is a reflection on them. And which one of you all was it? They're not here. They're not here. She don't even live with you. People ask me all the time, how can you be on TV so much? <coughs> I don't ask to be on TV. They come to me and ask me if I would consult, uh, consent to women. When something happens in Kershaw County, above and beyond the normal routine mess that we deal with every day, I send out a press release to about 35 media outlets. WIS, WLTX, WOA, Watchbox, uh, the State Newspaper, Elgin News, Chronicle Independent, uh, Associated Press, you name it. I send it out to them. Some call us and say, we'd like to be on your press, your media list. Send it out to all these people. There are only a few that call me. The state calls me. WIS called me more than anybody. Not because my wife used to work there. She didn't even know half of these people. Uh, WLTX calls me some. WOA calls me some. Watchbox some. Uh, when we had that, that woman who was kidnapped out of uh, Chesterfield County, there were media from all from York County and Chesterfield County, they were called. They wanted an interview. I'm not going to say I'm not going to be interviewed. I think it's important for the people of our county to know that we are being we are, we are having progressive law enforcement in Kershaw County. And the people of this county need to know what's going on. I am not making the county look bad by being on the news. I'm making the county look good by showing people that we're doing something about it. And we're going to continue to do that. And I hope that I'll be on less and less and less because it's going to get better and better. better. So that's, that's the thing about being on the media. I don't call and say, would you put me on TV now? They call me. This guy came from LTS, came from earlier tonight. As soon as I get interviewed, I didn't call him up here. I didn't know they were coming. So that's the story about the media stuff. Uh, I do got a couple more. I'm not immune to being a victim of a crime. Every time I go home, I look at my house to see if I've been broken into. Because it was about a couple of months ago, I don't even remember when it was. Somebody called my office and said, there's a man peeking in the windows at your house. So I said, well, so it's my out there. And so I went to my house. And the person was gone. I did a little investigating on my own to find out who we, who we thought he was. And we tracked him back. He's a convicted sex offender out of New Jersey. He didn't want to my house. My wife had just left the house for that morning, seen him in the area. Kind of freaked her out a little bit. But she went on to do her business. While she was going, this guy peeked in the room my house and actually went into our bomb shelter room. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, I can be the victim of a crime as well. So my concern is they want everybody in this room. We have to be vigilant. We have to look out for each other. And like they said, we're not asking you to be nosy spy neighbors. But if you got a neighbor and you know he's going to be out of town, you know, talk to your neighbor so that if all of a sudden the van backs up into the driveway and people start unloading stuff out of the house, you, know, you can call 911. You can call 911 and not leave your name. And sometimes if you know this is going to crime take place, Crime Stoppers will pay you a reward. And I look, the more people who get to get this stuff, the more tips are coming. Uh, you have a question. We'll keep these questions ready. We'll keep everything in one time. If you'd like to ask me the question afterwards, you can. I'll be more happy to answer that. I thank you all for coming. I appreciate the civility here. I've tried to answer all the questions. Um, you want to meet some of the deputies back there? I got the traffic guys back there against the wall. Um, some of the deputies. Uh, we have uh, we're well represented tonight. So thank you again for coming. I appreciate your concern and thank you. Yeah, right after I left the town hall meeting, I haven't even got on I-20 yet. I got pulled over by one of Kershaw County guys. Because I had a license plate light not working. I 
sorry, that's just a warning. Just make sure you get your license plate lights fixed, okay? I sure will. All right, drop here. Thank you.